Hello beautiful people, hello Afro Diaspora. I am Makeda Daniels. Welcome to my channel. This video explores the life of General Thomas Alexandre Dumas, a prominent military figure during the French Revolution and the Napoleonic Wars. His impressive military accomplishments and exceptional leadership skills made him a central figure in the history of the French military. His battles in Italy, Austria, Egypt, and his rivalry with Napoleon Bonaparte are legendary. The father of Dumas, Alexandre Antoine, de la Pailleterie was of poor nobility from a Norman Provence of Caux. The family fortune would only last one generation unless they go out to work and make a new fortune. Antoine was the oldest of three brothers and fought in one of the French wars. In 1738, he got out of the army and Antoine decided to surprise his younger brother Charles in Saint-Domingue with an unannounced Visit. Charles had little appetite for his older brother and heir, whom he saw as a freeloader. Charles had a sugar plantation in the colony, and his wealth came from a rich Creole woman he married. Charles was living lavishly as a sugar plantation owner and was not pleased with the arrival of Antoine. Charles harbored his older brother, but Antoine was an unwanted guest. One night, things reached a boiling point and the fight between the two brothers occurred. Antoine, a former military, could have used his fighting skills to injure his younger brother Charles, but he chose to flee the scene. Presumably, the main reason Antoine's younger brother despised him was his numerous relationship with the enslaved women. That night of the fight when Antoine fled the plantation, he took three enslaved people with him two men and a woman, his mistress. His brother held a search hunt but never found Antoine. Antoine changed his name and lived for almost 30 years without anyone knowing who he was. He kept himself and his enslaved alive by growing coffee. 14 years later, while living in exile in the port city of Jeremy on March 25, 1762, Antoine's new mistress, Marie Cessette Dumas, gave birth to their son, Thomas Alexandre. Thomas Alexandre grew up in this small city where extreme unjust were part of daily life. The wealthiest population amongst the white plantation owners were the free mixed people. They owned plantations. Most enslaved had a lifespan of a few years of physical and soul-breaking labor. This free mixed population were also shop owners and they were in charge of the cultural activities in San Domingue. The young Thomas reportedly was a boy full of life and it seemed like his father recognized his talents such as his athleticism. There is this story his son, the famous writer Alexandre of the Three Musketeers told, quote, One day the young Thomas was running home from town when he was 10 years old. He noticed a tree trunk lying on the path that wasn't there two hours before. He started throwing stones at it out of amusement when the trunk suddenly started to move and ran towards him. Not about to wait for what it was, he started running from the danger, running and looking back to the thing chasing him. He saw a wide mouth full of teeth. A crocodile was chasing the young Thomas. An old enslaved man who saw him being chased yelled, Serpentine, little sir, serpentine. Thomas immediately followed this instruction by running in a snake motion and survived the crocodile chase. Thomas's father probably recognized his athletic and decided to take him to France, or he was simply the favorite child. Dumas's father, Antoine, became heir of the family estate when his parents died. However, because Antoine was living in exile, the younger brother became the heir, since the second brother was already dead. Charles uh, did not live long to enjoy his inheritance. He got sick with gout at the plantation. Doctors advised him to leave the hot climate of Saint-Domingue and to return to France. He followed doctors advice, but not for long because after he arrived in France, he died 
leaving the estate to his children. His children inherit the estate, but they also inherited their father's bad luck because Antoine was finally found. Antoine decided to claim his inheritance in France. But before leaving Saint-Domingue, he allegedly sold his enslaved mistress and other children. Thomas, on the other hand, he pawned. He pawned him to a lieutenant named Louis Roussel. And after Thomas arrived in France in 1776, he paid the lieutenant and got Thomas back. At that time, Thomas was 14 years old and it looked like a habit of his father to pound his possessions for money. Shortly after Thomas arrived, his father Antoine pawned the estate and moved into a luxurious townhouse with Thomas and the housekeeper. The trio entered their new house and Thomas was given a great allowance, the best clothing and a lackey to tend to his needs. Antoine's other children are never mentioned again, but he chose the life he wanted for Thomas, turning him into a count. He hired him a governess, and because his education was lacking compared to the other aristocrats' children, his lessons in mathematics, Greek, history, grammar were very intense. For fencing and sword fighting, he enrolled him in the La Bossier Fencing School, where Thomas met Le Chevalier, and the two practiced together regularly. About Saint George, Le Chevalier. Dumas said, quote, His skin was light and made lighter by his habit of powdering it. He wore white wigs in the high court style of Louis XV. By the time uh, Chevalier and Thomas met, Chevalier was already 35 and was an accomplished fencer and musician. It is said that Dumas was pretty dark compared to some other mixed people in France. A French paper profiled him as, quote, one of the most handsome men you could ever meet and a gentle and gracious man. He is dark, very dark. His frizzy hair recalls the curls of the Roman and Greeks. Thomas was primarily accepted into French society due to his father's nobility and of course for his talents as a swordsman, for his horse riding and for his strength. Thomas lived in an age where these abilities were highly valued, so he had a promising future in the military, just like his father, Antoine. Thomas did face racial discrimination. He was a known socialite who attended all of the fine arts Paris offered. One time, two noblemen challenged him by calling him a servant for his lady friend that accompanied him. They mentioned all kinds of racial slurs and an altercation occurs between Thomas and the two men. Of course, they lost the fight with Thomas, his father disowning him. Thomas' father disowned him probably to save him from financial trouble. Antoine, his father, decided to marry the housekeeper, Mary Rutu, in 1786. Since she did not care for Thomas and him foreseeing a loss in his allowance, Thomas decided to enlist in the military, not as an officer but as a common soldier, a decision his father disagreed with. Antoine thought his son would disgrace the family name and told him he could not enlist under his real name. Thomas then decided to enroll in his mother's name, Dumas. From then on, he became Thomas Alexandre Dumas. Unfortunate for the woman his father married, wedding bliss was short-lived. The old count passed away two weeks after marriage, leaving his new wife behind with an amount of debt she could not pay. She made an agreement with a brother-in-law of the deceased Antoine, who sold the family property and paid off the credit. Editors. I believe that Antoine disowned his son to save him from the financial difficulties he would face after his death. Marriage In 1792, at 20 years old, Dumas married Marie-Louis Labourette, an innkeeper's daughter. They had three children, including the famous French writer Alexandre Dumas, 
author of The Three Musketeers and the Count of Monte Cristo. Dumas' military career began during the French Revolution, where he quickly climbed the ranks due to his exceptional leadership and combat skills. He joined the Black Legion, a unit of free men of color, and fought in various campaigns, gaining recognition for his bravery and tactical abilities. He and the fighting master, Le Chevalier, also a military hero, lead the Black Army together. If you are interested in the story of Chevalier, I did an in two parts in depth video about his life. You may want to watch that. The Mars's military accomplishments in Italy, Austria, and Egypt played a significant role in the French Revolutionary Wars, the Battle in the Mountains. In 1793, General Dumas was tasked with leading the French army in an attack against Austrian forces in the French Alps. Specifically, his mission was to capture the strategic Mount Senipa, a key route for the Austrian troops. In addition, General Dumas emphasized the importance of intelligence gathering and surveillance. He sent out scouts to gather information on the enemy's positions and movements which allowed him to plan his attacks more effectively. Another important aspect of General Dumas' training was his emphasis on marksmanship. He trained his soldiers to shoot accurately and quickly, which was especially important in the mountainous terrain where long-range shooting was often necessary. Dumas drew maps of their surroundings and another thing he also did was hunting. Dumas took care of his men's ranching and he also demanded suitable military attire. His men respected him for such qualities as a leader because he was looking after their well-being. Despite the rough terrain and the well-prepared Austrian defenses, General Dumas and his troops beat the Austrian troops after a series of fierce battles. This victory made it easy for France to seize power in Italy, one of the biggest accomplishments during the Revolution Wars. After this huge victory, Dumas was summoned back to Paris. Now, Dumas didn't always follow orders, which sometimes put him in a dangerous position. During the Revolution Wars, mistrust of the government and hunger for power could make anyone end up at a guillotine. Fortunately, Dumas responded that he would oblige to the order when he was done with his duty on the battlefield. This saved him from being killed. After the victory in the French Alps, Dumas was called to duty in Fengi. He discovered that most soldiers lived from plundering and terrorizing shop owners. He demanded discipline because he wanted to discipline the army and put the principles of justice and humanity into practice on the field. Those who disobeyed his orders were punished. This approach didn't favor him by other generals and the government in Paris, except for one, Clabert, one of his best friends. Dumas was sent on leave and it seemed like the battle of Montseny and Fengi drained him physically and mentally. He started having severe headaches, so taking time to recuperate was much needed. In the meantime, Dumas had fathered two girls, Alexandre Amy and shortly after Louis Alexandrine. While fighting another battle in Italy in 1797, his youngest daughter Louis Alexandrine died. It is said that this battle was his most heroic one, capturing 600 enemies, confiscating cannons, and fighting like a madman, which gave him the nickname the Black Devil. When the Austrians shot his horse underneath him, he kept fighting the enemy. Afterward, it seemed like his frenzy came from the hurt of losing his daughter. Rivalry with Napoleon Dumas and Napoleon had a complicated relationship. Despite their initial collaboration, Dumas often disagreed with Napoleon's strategies and decisions, leading to tensions. This disagreement between the two resulted in a General Dumas not being rewarded after victories. Dumas was a staunch Republican and believed in the ideals of 
of the French Revolution, whereas Napoleon had imperial ambitions that clashed with Dumas' principles. During the French Revolutionary Wars, General Thomas Alexander Dumas played a significant role in the Italian campaign against Austria, which took place between 1796 and 1797. The campaign, led by General Napoleon Bonaparte, aimed to expel Austrian forces from Italy and secure French dominance in the region. General Dumas participated in several crucial battles in Italy, where he demonstrated his exceptional leadership and combat skills. It was the first major French victory in the Italian campaign and Napoleon's rise to prominence. Dumas led his troops courageously and contributed to the decisive French victory over the Austrians and their allied forces. General Thomas Alexander Dumas and Napoleon Bonaparte had different approaches to treating citizens during the military campaigns. Their perspectives and personalities influenced their interactions with the civilian population. General Dumas was known for his humane treatment of citizens in the territories where he served. He demonstrated respect for human rights and the dignity of the local population, often extending compassion and kindness to the people. Dumas was against pillaging and mistreatment of civilians, adhering to a code of conduct that prioritized respect and protection for the inhabitants of the regions he conquered. In contrast, Napoleon Bonaparte gradually became more focused on his personal ambition and imperial conquest. Napoleon's primary objective was to consolidate power and expand the French Empire. As a result, his treatment of citizens in the territories he conquered was often more pragmatic and at times harsh. For example, Napoleon was known to impose heavy taxes on the conquered regions, which burdened the local population. Furthermore, his military campaigns led to considerable suffering and displacement for many civilians, overthrowing British power, conquering Egypt. Overthrowing British power would be a commendable accomplishment for Napoleon, as his dream of becoming as powerful as Alexander the Great seemed within reach. Napoleon relied on his highly valued army general, General Thomas Dumas, to assist him in achieving his ambitious plans to establish a Franco-Afro-Asian empire spanning from the Barbary coast cities in the west to India in the east by seizing Egypt and cutting off British overland trade routes. Egypt was a disaster. Napoleon didn't find the glory he sought. He promised his men land and fortune. Instead, they were dying in the Egyptian desert, attacked by thousands of Mameluk horsemen. Their swords could behead a man with just one single Blow. The French army only beat them because the French army's way of fighting was more organized. However, Napoleon's men were killing themselves out of exhaustion and thirst. And at one point, when they were captured by the enemy, some of the men were brutally abused while in prison, something they had never experienced before. General Dumas was able to negotiate their freedom. The conquering of Egypt filled and Napoleon decided to leave Egypt without telling his army. Dumas followed suit. He embarked on a ship to France, but halfway the ship appeared to leak, so they had to stop at the nearest port in Taranto, a city in Italy that was an ally of Austria and hated the French. When the government discovered that French soldiers were on board of the ship, Dumas and his comrades were taken as prisoners. For two years, he was held captive in a dungeon. In the first year, he was allowed to exercise, but after that, the prisoners were more closely guarded. During his imprisonment, he endured a series of health problems, including facial paralysis and severe stomach pains. And Dumas was convinced that the doctors who treated him tried to poison him. When his wife Marie found out he had left Egypt months ago, she started to worry and wrote letters to the generals, but they were so busy fighting the war that she hardly got any response. She was also ignored by the government that saw him in such high regard. In the end, it was his old comrade Murad who intervened and got Dumas released. When his wife saw him, she didn't recognize her husband. He returned to her broken physically and mentally. 
Nevertheless, he recovered somewhat because in 1802, this son, the famous writer Alexandre Dumas, was born. In 1805, Thomas Alexandre Dumas' health deteriorated dramatically. Violent stomach pains tormented him and it turned out to be cancer. Before passing, he requested his old comrades like General Murat to take care of his family. Although they tried after his death, it turned out to be unsuccessful. Napoleon had not forgotten their old rivalry and Dumas' name was not to be mentioned. General Thomas Alexander Dumas died in 1806 at the age of 44, reportedly due to the harsh conditions he experienced in prison and the toll that his military service has taken on his body. His legacy as a highly skilled and courageous military leader was forgotten by many, but his son, Alexander Dumas, kept his legacy alive by celebrating him in various literature and history, including novels such as The Count of Monte Cristo and The Three Musketeers. Beautiful people, Afro Diaspora, thank you for sticking with me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give a thumbs up, to like, to subscribe, and let's chat in the comments. What did you know about Alexandre Dumas?